What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be another quick car video review. This is gonna be a thousand mile review of our 2021 Subaru Outback Onyx Edition. I've done many car reviews on this channel. This is just something I like doing on the side. Uh, this is going to be the last car for a while. I'm pretty sure I said that before, uh, but I had a 2020 STI and with the used car market right now, uh, I actually traded it in for more than I paid for it. I did a video on that if you wanna watch it. And I did this for more of a family decision. So this just makes more practical sense as a family car or a second family car. We have a, a Subaru Ascent also. Um, but this is giving an idea. We actually had a limited and I previously wanted another limited, but I couldn't find one. I'll talk about that kind of as I go. Uh, but this car, uh, it's a standard Outback. The Onyx Edition is really in between a premium and a limited. Uh, so it has a lot of the same features uh, as both. It's missing one thing that I kind of wish I would have sprung for and waited for a limited, but it's hard to find. Right now it's nearly impossible to find basically any Subarus out there. Uh, so the front is near identical to the limited. Uh, it's mainly all black. This is what I really like about the Outbacks is that you have these black blacked out lights here, which is a good feature. Uh, it does come standard LED headlights on the front and uh, fog lights. Now I believe that's on the premium one also. Uh, so the steering responsive headlights, I've talked about these before, they're great. Uh, I won't get into too much of that. Uh, the Onyx, this is the XT. It has the 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, which is the reason why I got this over, I really wanted a Forester, uh, but the motor in that just isn't is, isn't up to speed. Uh, we're gonna take this to Florida soon. So uh, I like the ability to be able to pass people on the interstate and this will actually do that, uh, no problem. So the front, it looks like a car. It's basically a lifted car. Uh, you have your symmetrical all wheel drive, which I've talked about before. It's very different than what you would get on say, um, a Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4. Those are front wheel drive cars. Uh, the all wheel drive on there is not really I would say it's not really a legit all-wheel drive. It's uh, more front-wheel drive uh, based. Uh, this is always sitting in four power, four, uh, or power to all four of the wheels. Um, so let's talk about why we got the Onyx Edition and didn't wait for the Limited. Well, for one, uh, we usually go to King Subaru when we buy our uh, cars, and this one actually was one of the only ones that was available. They usually have between 30 and 60 Outbacks, and... Uh, I will try to get you a, kind of a shot up, but uh, currently they only have like eight or nine, ten. They don't have very many. There's almost no cars at the dealerships now just because of the semiconductor chip shortage. Uh, so I stuck with this. I really didn't want the white. They had a blue 2022, but that did not have the 0% financing. This uh, we financed at 0%, so that's why I got the 2021. Uh, so let's get around and get a tour of the car, kind of what I like and don't like. Uh, it does come with 18 inch rims. Uh, this is standard, I believe, on the Onyx and up. So this is the uh, Yokohama Avid GT tires. I've already talked about these tires before. I'm not a huge fan. It's 225, 225.60. Let's see if I can find this on here. Yep, 225.60. 18, uh, which I'd pref I would prefer like 245, 50, 18, uh, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. But you get the blacked out rims, which is a good feature. So basically, basically with the Onyx Edition, you're getting blacked out rims and you're getting the blacked out kind of rear here. So you get the, the Outback and the XT is blacked out. I actually went and got the trailer hitch on this because they threw it on for free. So it does can tow up to 3,500 pounds, uh, which is a good feature. Uh, but just looking at the back here, I like the way the Onyx editions look, just that it's uh, got it all blacked out. Uh, there's no gray or any type of anything like that. So if we come back and look at the front, let me show you what I'm kind of talking about here. So the other ones will have some chrome here. So there's not any chrome at all. It is all uh, just standard blacked out, uh, which is uh Good, I like that. Uh, basically, previously I had a 2018 Subaru uh, Black Edition uh, Forester. This looks very similar to that, so it's it's 
Uh, got some good features, but first thousand, first thousand miles, I'm getting about 21. Let's see if I can get in here and show you 21 miles per gallon so far, which is a little low, but that should come up as we go. Oh yeah, key fob. So if you've never had a new Subaru, this is the key fob that you get. This is, I believe, just standard on all of them. Uh, it feels nice. Uh, it feels like this is feels like this is plastic. It's not really metal, but it has a nice nice feel to it. Uh, but gas mileage that's probably the most important thing. At least if you ask me. Let's see what do we get here. Oh, we gotta shut the door. So gas mileage. Let's see. I'm gonna scroll through here. So I'm getting. Ignore that 21.2 over a little over a thousand miles, which it'll get up a little bit better than that. I assume I'll probably get 23 to 25. Uh, I don't drive a whole lot on the interstate, so that's probably what I'm going to actually end up sticking with. Gauge cluster's not much different, um, just standard Subaru fare. You can rotate between different screens here, which is nice. You can also change the top where you see where it has the, the actual how many miles left in a tank. You can change and put different things on that. Uh, which I like. Usually I almost always leave it on the trip. Uh, and then you got the big 11.2 inch, 6 inch, 11 inch touchscreen. It's in the, I would say, the wrong direction. I'd rather be facing it this way. So uh, you have that there. It is see, It does seem a little faster than the 2020, which I like, uh, but it's not the best thing in the world. They have updated to where the auto start stop is here in the front which is a massive deal to me, just having it there before you had to go through, and it was like three steps to actually get to that. Uh, so that's nice. I do not like how small the buttons are down there still. For the climate, make sure you're okay with this stuff. Make sure you play around with it, the infotainment and something you're okay with because I don't like it. Uh, I like how more like the Forester in a sense set up, uh, how you have physical knobs for all that, but you're but basically going to turn the air on. You got to go through the air and touch everything and it is a little laggy it does speed up uh, as it kind of boots up but uh, these are just way too small for for me but once you get it set it's it's okay uh, you don't really have a lot of issues there uh, but I do like that they added that there and they are doing a lot more updates on these I haven't had any issues with this in crashing or anything so it's been pretty nice uh, you got plenty of room in here so you got a nice place to put your phone at uh, cup holders are nice uh, get back to the to the outside here so uh got your nice wide doors they open up uh have a nice wide stance to them the differences between let's say the limited and the onyx well the onyx you cannot get with the upgraded speakers uh this just has your standard six speakers in it which are okay uh they're better than old subaru like we had a 2000 and a 2018 Forester. They're way better than the speakers that were in that, but they leave a lot to be desired compared to the Harman Kardon, which you can't get at the Onyx, which is kind of a shame. Uh, so you do have this stitching here. All the Onyx editions have this green stitching on the door panel. I'm not sure why they chose to stay with the green. Um, and you can't just mix it up, but it does add a little bit of character to the car. So you have these different colors. You have gray here, black here, which I like. And then you have their StarTech actual seats which i believe these are similar to toyota's basically they're waterproof they feel like a rubber plastic you can see i did not clean these very well they feel like a rubber plastic vinyl uh, type material but they're pretty good <laughs> supposedly it says that they don't get warm they do get warm so it's it feels similar to leather to me uh, just a little bit more kind of on the rubberish side of things uh, so that's it. There's tons of room in the front seat. It's very comfortable power seats and all the Onyx Edition. So that's uh, a nice feature there. And I just noticed somehow my shutter speed got not stop. Okay, fixed it. Uh, so those those are nice features. Uh, pop the hood here. Tons of room in the back seat. That's probably one of the big things I really like is that you got. All this room here in the back seat so if you look here uh, this we do plan on taking on vacation so we have our 
child car seat there. This is the Nunarava, which is a larger car seat. So this is one thing I really like about the Outbacks is this, there's just tons of room in the back seat. Uh, we'll go back and go to the other side uh, and kind of give you give you a sh shot there. Uh, and then tons of storage area. That's another thing. It's, it's very similar to, uh, let's say, a, a Forester. It's just a little bit more long and not as tall. Uh, I do like that the Onyx Edition, you have a full-size spare. I'm not going to show it to you here because every time I open this, these things flop out and it's hard to get it closed again. But you have a full-size spare, so it's great for taking on trips uh, if, you're, if you're doing something like that. Uh, the blacked out, that's... Uh, I would have preferred a blue color, but the white and black really look good together. Um, and gas cap, so you're ask gas cap. Uh, roof rails, I've talked about those before. They're very nice. You already have your built-in crossbars. So if you're someone that does a lot of uh, kayaking or you're going to haul a bike on here, uh, basically this just pops up. And you already have your crossbars built in, so you don't have to worry about buying those separately. And they just store in there like that uh, and they're very secure uh, so this is where the car seat is generally at in the car and this is where I'm talking about how much back seat room you have there's tons and tons of room uh, this seats back pretty far and we still have the kind of inch there that you need uh, for safety so there is uh, plenty of room in there for a good size car seat this is a fairly larger car seat so and another bonus, tons of front room. So tons of front leg room. My wife's 5'10", so she's a little bit taller. And as you can see, the seat is back pretty far. So compared to the STI, there's a lot more room here in the front. Uh, so that's something that was a big plus for me was, was actually that. Uh, it's on the global architecture. So the new global architecture platform, which is good. Uh, let's show you the kind of the... Set this down for a second. So this is the big reason why I got this over the Forester. I prefer the Forester when it comes to the just the internal layout. The house is a little bit higher. Uh, I like the looks of it a little bit better. And it's cheaper, so that's really what I wanted. But you cannot get this engine in it, so you get 260 horsepower, which is nice in this. It feels very fast, very speedy, uh, almost too much horsepower i think sometimes if you really get on it it just feels like it doesn't have the ability to uh the handling is not great it's a soft wagon it's it's not made to be a sports vehicle so i assume most people aren't going to drive it like let's say an sti or a wrx but you do have to have a learning curve if you're coming from a sportier car into this and thinking it's going to be sporty it is not it is almost unsafe to drive if you're doing it in a sporty manner uh, but i do like the actual motor it's very smooth uh good gas mileage um i think it's rated at 23 and 30 or 25 combined so uh i'm looking forward to that the brake and period you always have a little bit less gas mileage that's just uh, how things work so it's nice the cvt is it's okay it doesn't bother me if you're just putting around town and driving like a normal sane human being you actually hardly ever notice it so uh, i do like like that, would prefer to have or automatic, but it, it honestly doesn't bother me. There's a little quirks with it, like if you uh, floor it, there is some turbo lag. Uh, and it does almost seem to stutter a little bit, depending on uh, what gear it's in, but I haven't had any issues with it so far. There's not a lot of reports of, of issues with modern Subaru CVT. They're built in-house by them, so not a whole lot of problems there but overall I've been very happy with it I really like the way it looks mainly because it's a little more unique compared to a lot of things out there you do not see a lot of wagons anymore uh, I like the blacked out rims even though I probably will replace these at some point uh, I have a winter set of tires and rims that I was using on my actual STI that fits on this uh, it makes it a little bit wider stance, but uh, it fits on this. So I'm actually going to use those in the winter, which is good. Uh, the eyesight's nice. Uh, I wouldn't think that I would like the eyesight, uh, but I really, it's starting to grow on me. So I, I really do like that. Uh, it's just a, a nice safety feature. Um, the pre-collision braking and all that stuff is a little bit aggressive for me. So if you get too close to a vehicle, it will brake for you. So you have to kind of be careful there. And sometimes when I back out of the garage, 
it'll slam on the brakes because if you see right there it thinks that I'm going to hit the wall but I'm actually nowhere near it so it has this few quirks but overall it's meant for safety which I really like. So that's it. First thousand miles, decent gas mileage, 21 miles per gallon. It does not take premium, which is one reason why I actually got this, is that it doesn't take premium fuel. Uh, gas is pretty expensive now, uh, especially if you get to premium, you're getting close to $4 a gallon. So this was a cheaper option. It's cheaper than STI, less maintenance, less fuel. I drive a lot between picking our little one up, our 15 month old. Uh, you just drive more than you actually think you actually do. And I was I'm spending half the amount of gas that I am uh, previously. So that's it. Pretty happy with it. Uh, the seats, uh, I've heard a lot of negative things about them, but they're really comfortable. My wife actually thinks they're more comfortable than the Ascent, which has the same seats, but we have uh, the Limited, which has the leather. Uh, so that's it. She doesn't like that it uh, doesn't ride as high as the Ascent. Uh, so make sure you get in it. It feels like a lifted car looks I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain it's not quite as tall as a Forester like you're not quite as high up but I like it uh, we're pretty happy with it especially if you can get the zero percent financing so if you can find one of these and you can get the zero percent financing I would highly recommend doing it uh, these are great vehicles I think we paid around thirty five thousand dollars for it uh, which is cheaper than the limited the limited is about thirty seven and they paid us more for our STI than what we actually bought it for new so we had a decent amount of equity in this and this thing so we're like we are we're able to put a decent amount down uh, but that's it if you have any comments questions leave them below i'll get a more organized review of, of this up as i go uh, but this is just a pretty random one uh, thanks for watching have a good rest of the day out there uh, i'll try to get a trip update because it's getting ready to go on about a 2500 mile trip soon uh, there and back so we'll kind of get an idea of what it's like to drive on a long trip. Uh, have a good rest of the day, weekend, whatever it is out there, and I'll see you guys next time.